Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, we're going to be continuing on where we left off in the last video and the last video was actually a colour matching video, so something a little bit different. When I got up to this car, it was um, yeah last Friday, I'm editing the video up today on the Sunday and I was never actually planning to do a video on this, however I had a look at the colour chips for this car. The colour really wasn't that good and I thought why not do another colour matching video, I've had a few requests for it. And then I thought well I've come this far, I might as well just keep making the video to continue for the rest of the car. So, so we'll obviously start off doing our prep work, get it into the booth, do a little bit of masking and then start spraying. So first off what you might have noticed me doing was wiping all the panels down to give them a really good clean down. Uh, obviously we've made sure that the entire car is covered and masked that down to avoid dust and overspray because sometimes what happens is like I'll be blocking this repair down and then I might go through if the repair isn't quite good enough or I might even need to refill it and then reprime it. So um, yeah, having that piece of plastic over the entire car keeps it clean for one and keeps the overspray off it if, um, if there is any uh, primer work done at the time when I'm doing my prep work. So I will just be including a small snippet of each stage of this uh, vehicle. However, when we get to the painting stage, I'll be including all of the paint application. I guess that's the fun part. So obviously after I got it all cleaned down, I started blocking the primer areas. So obviously the primer work was not included in this video, but we put a good four coats of um, close primer, close colored primer to the body of the car. So that's obviously gonna help with the um, application of the paint and the coverage. So yeah, gave it a good block down with some 180 grit. So 180 grit is a bit on the coarse side, but um, as long as you make sure you get all those 180 grit scratches out, there's nothing wrong with doing it. Um, and the advantage of using the slightly coarser sandpaper when you're doing your prep work, um, when you're blocking it down at least, is you're gonna get that a hell of a lot straighter than you would if you were to just block that down with 320 grit. Like the 320 grit, grit will follow the imperfection. So if, the, if there's like high and low spots in the panel left over from the repair, then it will basically follow it. The finer sandpaper grits will follow it, more likely, uh, I've found anyway. And you might have also noticed that I was doing directional sanding, so most of the sanding I do with the direction of the car. Um, I do have other videos that go a little bit further into depth with the prep work, but as I say, we're just gonna be including a small snippet of each stage, and we'll just smash through the prep work nice and quickly, get it in the booth, get it masked up, and slam some paint down. So obviously, once I finished blocking the repair down, or the primed area down, I gave it a buzz down with some 320 grit and that's mainly because it was a, um, a larger area so sometimes on the smaller repairs that I've still blocked down with 180 grit I'll go straight up to 400 grit and um, yeah that can work quite well for the smaller repairs but for something this size which is most of the door, the best part of the entire door had been blocked down so those deep 180 grit scratches need to come out so that's why I went 180, 320 then 600. Obviously I did sand the sharp prime edges down with a bit of 500 in between stages. So yeah, just don't forget to do that. And obviously next up, we're just gonna be getting rid of all the shiny edges. So you kind of get everything with the orbital sander. Don't even try. Uh, you just get what you can with it and then finish the rest off with a hand sanding pad. So the ones I'm using here are the super fine pads and I've been using them lately. They're pretty, pretty cool, pretty handy pads to use. So. Um, yeah, they've been very good for the waterborne system. I found that previously I was using 800 grit softback sanding sponges and they were just getting a little bit too scratchy. So obviously I just started off um, using the 800s with um, the darker colors and I'd noticed that um, there was a few scratches the kind of thing that you can clear over with a darker color and I thought nah it's it's worth changing my methods ever so slightly and um, moving on to these pads and yeah they've been working quite well so I do highly recommend them they're not that expensive either like a lot of the uh, finer sandpapers if you go up to like a thousand grit and above uh, they start getting really really expensive so that's that's one thing I actually do like about these super fine pads and if they were like two or three times the price I would probably look elsewhere maybe even just start using scotch bright again because scotch Bright does actually still work even when you're doing it dry so yeah any any people out there who don't have the super fine pads to do your blends with you can still use your um light gray scotch bright for your blend panels there's definitely more than one way to skin a cat and obviously this is just the way that i prep 
a car up. This is just the way that I spray a car. Within reason, there's certain things that you don't want to do, but yeah, at the end of the day, if you get the same results as me and you do it slightly different, who am I to tell you how to do it, you know? All of us guys at work have got our own little take on how to do our job. So there's a couple of little things that we all do differently in our prep work and obviously in our paint work and all that, but at the end of the day, it's the results that matters. I, I do laugh sometimes, like, I get some crazy comments, like people are like, who the hell do you think you are, man, using all these crazy sandpaper grits, like 600, you know, and it's like, why do you even care, man? Like, why do you, seriously, why, why do you care if I'm some dude in, in a paint shop in Perth, probably on the other side of the world than you, for all I know, why do you care if I'm using 600 grit? Like, how does it change your life, <laughs> you know? To the other kind of people who just about giving me death threats for using a slightly different colored primer than what he might think I should be using. I'm serious, man. Like, on my Raw channel, I used to upload heaps of videos onto my second channel. I actually haven't been uploading much over there, but I had this guy and he, dead set, man. I swear he wanted to kill me because um, we might have used a light gray primer on a dark colored car. And I'm like, man, how the hell does that change your life? And why would you want to kill someone because of that, man? Yeah, when you get to that level, it, it's like, it's beyond even trying to excuse yourself. It's not even about, like, what I did anymore. It's about, it, it becomes about you, you know what I mean? It's like, what the hell is your problem, man? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I can't help but laugh at some of the extremely stupid comments I do get sometimes. Don't get me wrong, I don't take them seriously most of the time. Some of them are just like, oh, that hurts, you know. <laughs> but no, it's all good usually. I do actually appreciate having such an awesome audience. And um, yeah, it, for the most part, don't get me wrong, like 99.9% .9 of all the comments I do get are positive. And I also wish I could get back to more of your questions and comments. But at the end of the day, I am a busy man and um, yeah, there's only so many hours in a day. I must say that getting back to work was really good for me. So this was the first week back. I sprayed this car on the Friday after the first week back in after five weeks off. So what started off as a three week holiday in Thailand ended up with an extra two weeks of mandatory isolation inside my home. So. It was good at the start, like for the first week, I was like, oh cool, I can catch up on all these video games. And after the second week, it's like, eh, there's only so many video games you can play until you start getting bored. And there's only so much cleaning around the house you can do. So I must admit, it was really, really good to get back to work. And I was just so happy to be back at work and physically active again. Like I swear, man, like this week that I, I sprayed this car, I slept like an absolute baby, I swear. So, yeah, look, we're lucky here in Australia that we haven't been hit quite as hard as some of the places in the world with that virus, but um, it's always the way, like, absence makes the heart grow fonder, I guess. So when I got back to being able to spray again and back to, you know, doing my job that I love again, it made me love it even more than I did before I had that little bit of time off. So I have told this story on my channel before, but I'm aware that not everybody who watches my channel has watched all of my videos, so you may not know the story. So I was a spray painter since the age of 17. I started my apprenticeship, and then I was in Melbourne until around the year 2012, and then I moved over here to Perth. So I moved over here to Perth, and I got a job in the mine so that I could spend a bit more time with my girlfriend over there in Thailand. And so that was like a year or a year and a half out of the trade, out of spray painting. So I was working as a, a RC driller's offsider, and that was pretty hard work. But then after getting back to this trade, it made me realize how much I did love this trade. So yeah, a year away really did make me love it even more. And it was around the same time that uh, I decided to actually make this YouTube channel at all. And I mean, a big part of that was actually giving up the drink as well. So I'm a good three plus years off alcohol. So that's a, another good little milestone. But yeah, between coming back to this trade from a bit of time off and having all this extra time on my hands that I would have usually spent with hangovers and getting drunk. So I decided why not make that YouTube channel that I wanted to make for years. And well, yeah, the rest is history. Anyway, enough rambling on, on my coffee high. So let's continue on talking about the job. So obviously I gave it a good mask up and then I wiped it all down with the waterborne cleaner. Then I obviously gave it a good wipe down with the tack rag and a bit of air out of the spray gun. And then I used my Anesti Water Ballaria for the base coat blend. So basically all that does is fills in the prep scratches and it helps you do your blend. Now it's a bit funky looking when it's wet, but yeah, when it dries, you'll see it all just 
magically turns the right color. So yeah, like all this waterborne stuff, it looks really weird when it's wet, but then it dries down pretty cool. So it, it can be a little bit um, harder to do your blend at the start. Like you really just got to trust yourself, I guess. And that's something that really just comes with time. So I've been cranking the pressure down a little bit when I'm doing my blends. So go down to like 1.3 bars on the base of the gun and obviously just using my DeBull Burst Jetty Eye Pro Light. This is one of the Gunman Edition ones. Best gun on the market, mate, if you ask me. I feel like I was led down the garden path a little bit by quite a few of the paint reps around here. And don't take that personally if you are watching, but I just feel like I, I was lied to because I was told you have to like there was no question um, about it right you have to spray this stuff at two bar which is like 29 psi now if i was spraying these blends here at two bar they wouldn't be blends anymore and it was so hard to actually not get your base coat all the way down floating down to the adjacent panel and you what you wouldn't be blending because you would have your color down the other end of the panel so yeah, I mean, I've found that you can, you totally can drop the pressure down to 1.3 bar, even down to one bar if you really have to, and you will have no issues at all with the color. They would say, oh, the color's gonna change, blah, blah, blah. And then as it turns out, like later on, once I realized and figured it out that you can drop the pressure, they're like, oh no, that's only if you want to replicate the color cards. And then I'm like, so the whole time I could have been using 1.3, 1.2, whatever I like, as long as I was spraying the color out. And they're like, oh yeah, but it's like, why didn't you tell me that at the start? You know, so I don't know, I just feel like I was lied to and it was unnecessary. Um, for whatever reason, I don't even get why they were saying it that way. Maybe they're just too far by the book. Maybe that's what the book says. So they came in when they were doing a demo at one point and like they were there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And it wasn't until like just about the last thing on Thursday until I actually admitted, cause there was like a small spot repair. That's right, on a pillar. And I'm like, mate, <laughs> he's, he said to me, oh, cause I've been quizzing him the whole week. I'm like, man, can I, can I spray it anything but two bar? They're like two bar, two bar, two bar. Everything has to be two bar. And then he's standing there next to me. I don't even like them standing there next to me watching me because you're more thinking about what he's doing. But anyway, he said to me, he goes, oh, you don't have to spray that at two bar. I said, mate, I didn't, I was not going to give a crap what you were going to say. There is no way I was going to spray that at two bar <laughs> because I'm not stupid, you know? Like I said, mate, I'll put it this way. You don't water your pot plants with a fire hydrant, do you? You know? So why would I spray two bar on this tiny little spot repair? I'm not Superman. And then they totally changed their um, their tune on that last day. And it's like, so now you're telling me that I can spray it at whatever pressure I like. Yet the whole week I was quizzing you, what? because the blends on silvers was specifically one of my big issues with wanting to move over to this system. And now that I know that there's a much wider range of air pressures that I can spray it at without changing the color at all, um, it's really opened up the paint system to me and also figuring out that the silvers don't cover as well as they would like you to think that they cover and the color cards aren't actually the right color to the primer knowing a few little things like that I totally love this system so yeah in saying all that I've just been ranting over the last couple of minutes I totally love this paint system now if you have a look at this finish once it's all done you can see why I actually find it quite easy and quick easy to use very quick to use i had a look at the timestamps on the base coat application when i was doing the editing for this video and it took two minutes and 37 seconds to apply the base coat so that's very quick you can imagine if this was solvent you'd put your coat down wait for it to dry put another coat down wait for it to dry tack rag it and then put your last coat down and then you'd have to wait for that to dry and give it a tack rag again um so you know like you might lose a little bit on the drying times in this in winter or when it's humid, but this time of year, it actually hasn't been that bad. So as I said, it takes me, what, my two and a half minutes to get my base coat down. I'll then stand there with the air blower for, I don't know, maybe two to three minutes after spraying the base coat down. Um, and then I'll walk out, mix my clear coat up, come back in, no tack ragging, slam a couple of coats of clear down and you're done. So obviously the clear coat I'm using is the Standock Standard Clear. That's a four to one clear and it's a hybrid clear. I've made a quick mention to that in other videos. So it's like, it's not an MS, but it's not a HS. It's sort of like in between MS and HS. So I still like to put a full two coats down most of the time. So what I did is just put one coat down first. I waited for like two or three minutes and obviously cut that footage out because it would probably be as boring as watching paint dry. 
and then I put another nice wet coat down. So I hope you have all enjoyed listening to me rant on for the last 15 or so minutes on my coffee high. Um, so yeah, the gun I'm using here obviously is my favorite of all time still after all these years. It was GTI Pro Light. So TE20 1.3 is the setup on it. So 1.3 mil is the fluid tip, TE20 is the air cap, and Gunman Edition. Killer, mate. Killer. Have a look at that finish. Yeah, why wouldn't it be your favorite gun? It's nice and efficient, doesn't blast through too much paint, and it can uh, get finishes like that all day, every day. Nice and quick, not too fast, not too slow. You can obviously speed it up with 1.4 mil. If you really wanted to, you could slow it down with a 1.2. There is a few other air caps you can put onto it if you so desire. That's obviously gonna uh, slightly change the atomization. Well, in, in some cases, greatly change the atomization. I wouldn't really recommend anyone going with the HVLP unless your boss tells you you absolutely have to. You've got probably not a great deal to gain out of using HVLP spray guns in this industry anyway, not in the automotive or finish industry. I did actually work at a place where I was forced to use them for over a year. That was because the paint company was pushing them. It was like back in Melbourne and it was the Glazerit ART was the actual distributor. But yeah, Glazerit was trying to say that if you use the HVLP air caps, you're going to save extra paint. So the boss was like, no, you have to use HVLP. But basically, look, it's, it's a negligible amount of paint that you will save compared to like an RP if you were on the Sardas or compared to like the TE20 on the Deville Burst compared to your, your HVLP gun it, you might be talking 5 mils per panel like if that but that's it for this vid there gunners hope you did enjoy watching if you did give it a big thumbs up and if you're new around here don't forget to subscribe I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching and if you'd like to support the channel further you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favourite is those spray suits so they're a good quality collab branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it. There's also hats, drink coolers, hoodies and t-shirts so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested. All that aside I'd just like to say a big thanks for watching and that is enough to support the channel but as I say if you'd like to go the next step then be sure to check out some of that merchandise. Thanks for watching and until next time get out there and paint some shit. Gunman out.